Lander. Okay. All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about depth of field and how to create depth of field in Blender. Now, if you're unsure what depth of field is, I'm going to come over here to Google and uh, Google it real quick and give you an idea of what it actually looks like. I'm going to go to images and here I'll use this one as an example. As you can see right here, the vegetation, the flowers in the foreground is in focus, but everything in the background off in the distance is out of focus. That's because the camera is focused in on the things up close and everything in the back in the background has a bouquet effect or out of focus effect. And let me look at this one. Uh, here, here's a good example. As uh, on this one on the right right here, according to the image, it has an aperture setting of f22, and this one has an aperture setting of f2. Now f2 is a is a more narrow depth of field, meaning that it's only focused on a shorter on a smaller space from the camera. Not really in terms of distance, but let's just say it's focused at 10 meters to 11 meters from the camera. Whereas this one may be focused uh, nearly infinite, if that makes any sense. All right, now let's go ahead and bring, go over to Blender and I'll show you how to set this up. Now in this scene right here, I have a little icosphere right here and that's an emission object. I just have that sitting in the background. I'll get into that later on. But right now I got three monkey heads sitting down here on the floor. I have a fill light or just a, kind of a extra lighting up here just to help brighten the scene. I have a spot lamp right here basically pointing the same direction as the camera and I have the camera. Now if I want to, let me go ahead and select the camera and then look through the camera. And that's basically what we're looking at. Now if I put this in render view, as you can see, everything is pretty much in focus. You have the little icosphere right here creating light. You have the background, which the background's blurry, but that's part of the actual image itself. But all the monkey heads are perfectly focused. So how do we set up a depth of field? Well, we come over here to the camera settings and then we turn on depth of field. Nothing changed, right? And that's because we haven't really set any of the settings. Now, how do we go about controlling the depth of field? Now, we can do this pretty much three different ways, three, three main ways, I guess you could say. Now, the simplest way is basically you take this eyedropper and then you just click on the object you want to focus on. Now you didn't see much change, but that's because the f-stop is too wide of a depth of field. Now let's turn it down in order to lower the depth of field. Now if we turn it down to 0.3, it's, we can clearly see it's focused on this monkey head back here and not so much on the monkey heads up close. And the closer it gets to the camera, the less in focus it is. Just like the further away from the camera past this monkey head, the more out of focus it would be. Like this icosphere, it's out of focus. All right. Now, the downside to using this method as far as selecting which object is, you can't really animate it. You can't keyframe the focus object. You may not need to in your scene, but normally you would definitely want to be able to do that. So what we could do, and also the, the other downside to that is, suppose this monkey head was just huge. I mean like 100 meters across. Well, this focuses onto the origin of that object and the surface of that object may be uh, tens or hundreds of meters away from the origin which would make it hard to focus on. Alright, now the other way we could do it, I'm going to go ahead and put this in clay mode or whatever it's called. I'm going to go to front side view. Now we could add 
and empty. And this is one of the ways I, this is probably the way I prefer the most. Add an empty, go and just choose plain axis. And I'm gonna just grab it, move it up here a little bit so it's easier to grab later. Now I'm gonna go back to the camera and then right here I'm gonna set the focus object to that empty. Now the camera is gonna focus on wherever this empty is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the empty again, press zero, go into rendered view, and then if I move this empty along the x-axis, which is going to be from up here to back there, I'm going to grab it on the x-axis, move it up here, and it's moved past the monkey head, so everything's pretty much out of focus. Now if I take and go ahead and grab it on the x-axis, bring it to about here where the, this monkey head is, you can see that this monkey head is in focus and these are not and nothing in the background is even close to being in focus. Now if I grab it on the x-axis to drag it back here now this is out of focus and this monkey head back here is more in focus. Ooh, I've, I've moved it too far back. Let me grab it back on the x-axis, move it right here to where this monkey head is, and then go back into it. Now you can see this monkey head is now in focus and the rest of them is not in focus. Now, the reason why I prefer using this method is because this empty can also be used as a target for the camera or a track to object. Now, with this, I'm gonna go ahead and select the camera and then come down here to the object constraint button click that and then well if you go up here to add object constraint go to track 2 and then choose the empty now don't freak out when it does this because it's basically looking in some weird direction probably straight down or something right now you you will generally have to fiddle with these to to get the right orientation so it's looking at the empty but generally speaking this one needs to be set to Y and then this one needs to be set to minus C now the camera is looking directly at this empty right here and it's focused directly on that empty so now what I can do I can press 7 to go on top side view and then I can grab this empty and see look the camera is moving to basically constantly looking at wherever that empty is at and because I have the depth of field set up for that uh, empty wherever I put this empty the camera looks at and the camera fo camera focuses on so this is comes in r real good uh, comes comes in handy when animating the camera because see I could take this empty and let me drag this up just a hair and let me turn this the rendering off I could set the location set a location keyframe right here and then go to let's say frame 50 and set and then set the a new location keyframe here and then if I go back to frame 1 see this moves as key, the empty moves and the camera tracks to it. So that comes in handy especially with um, animating the camera. Now let's suppose you don't want to do it that way. I can delete, I'm going to go ahead, I just went ahead and deleted the empty and we'll do a different method. And this is the built-in method. Now I got the camera selected and I come over here to the camera icon and we have something called focusing distance. Now I can adjust this but I can't see what it's aiming at or what I can't see how far that distance is. There's nothing indicating it until I come up here to viewport display and then turn on this which is called limits and now we see a line coming directly out of the camera and then we have this 
focusing point. Where these two lines intersect, that's the focusing point. And then we can adjust that with this number. So let's say I want it to be focused right here, which is basically the first monkey head. Go into front side view, or camera view, go into render view, and we can see that it's focused on the monkey head. And if we go to top side view and then adjust this focusing point so that it's back around where the rear monkey head is, and then go back into camera view, we can see this focus back here. So that's another option you can use in order to control the depth of field. Now, the f-stop right here, that basically controls how narrow the depth of field is. If we want a very narrow depth of field, then we want a very low number right here. But if we want a higher depth of field, and what I mean by higher depth of field is is the number or is the distance that the camera can focus on or the amount of area the camera can focus on at the same time. For an example, let's say if we set this to a high depth of field, the camera could focus on basically about from here to here all at the same time. All this area in the middle would be in focus. But if I set this to a low depth of field, then maybe only from here to here could be in focus or where this is at from here to here could be in focus it would be narrow a narrow depth of field all right now there's one other thing i want to show you and it's called blades and this is based off of an actual camera now the default value is zero and if you look back here let me go ahead and adjust this uh, focus distance and adjust this up so we can see it a little bit better. Back here we have this icosphere. And right now with this set to zero, with the blades set to zero, this right here looks perfectly round. But if we set it to five blades, all of a sudden it kind of looks more like a, a hexagon. I think I guess I think that's what it is. Five shaped uh, geometrical object hexagon, or five sided. Um, and basically, the shutter inside of the camera, it is made up of blades, and the blades collapse and open, and that's like the shutter. And this or not really the shutter, but it controls how much light can come into the aperture. It, that's what it's called. It's called the aperture. I'm losing my mind. But the number of blades that uh, make up the aperture is what this is controlling. So it tries to replicate a real-world camera in terms of the way it looks. Let me turn this uh, up just a little bit. You can sort of see it. Let me select that, make it a little bit bigger size. And then go back to camera. And let me make this a little bit narrower depth of field. You can sort of see how the number of blades kind of changed the look of this. Now it would have probably been better if I would have added a subsurface modifier or made the icosphere more round itself because it's kind of interfering with the way it looks. Uh, let's see, I can go ahead and add modifier, subsur subsurface division, click apply and then go back to the camera. And now if I set this to 5, it's still not working quite right the way I wanted it or the way I thought it was going to. Uh, I probably don't... Yeah, alright, now we can see it better. 
you can you can actually see how five blades is causing kind of five different sides to this bouquet look of this icosphere and it was kind of a long way to go about explaining what that is and i probably confused you more than anything but anyway i hope this helped you understand what how to control the depth of field in blender i know when i first learned how to use uh, depth of field in blender i probably overused it and i probably still do but that's because i like the way bokeh looks and this is essentially what bokeh looks like everything in the background out of focus and then you have something in the foreground that's completely in focus but look how everything in the background all has that five the blur is kind of all in five sided shapes now if i turn this up to eight it kind of rounds that off and it's more of an octagon shape now but anyway i hope this helped you out you know, I hope you learned something from it. I guess that's it. Later, people. Have you ever wanted to learn how to do a massive physics simulation in Blender using the Rigid Body Physics Engine? If so, my friends over at Olaf 3D Tutorials has an in-depth and detailed training course that would teach you how to create massive physics simulations. This training course will include Kevin Plank style building destructions using a rigid body sphere as a projectile, a cannon to destroy a tower, or a car to crash through buildings. It will also include a basic Python scripting lesson to create and destroy a basic block style pyramid and to create a domino simulation. If this is something you are interested in, please follow the link in the description of this video and don't forget to use the promo code ROOKIE to get a 10% discount. Thank you for watching this video. Here are four other videos you might like. If you liked this video, please give it a like, share it, or leave a comment. I try to respond to every comment on every video regardless how old the video is. Also, please support your favorite YouTubers by disabling ad blocker. Thanks again. Later.